When were the cat's eye reflectors patented? I believe it was in May 1935. That was about 90 years ago. A British road worker came up with the original design, which included marble blocks and rubber reflectors. They are still in use today, but they are made of more modern materials. For instance, this version is made of aluminum and polycarbonate, can withstand being driven over by a car and can be recycled. It is a retro reflector or corner reflector, which reflects light back to a light source to help the driver stay on the road in the dark. Experts say that there are 580 million bicycles in the world, so it's not surprising that many countries are trying to regulate bicycle traffic dividers to help and protect bikers. Lanes from obnoxious drivers in particular. Zebra is the name of the lane separator which explains its colors. The materials are advantageous. The separators have no sharp edges and are visible even at night because the stripes reflect light. They are mounted on anchors and are used widely, for example, in Scotland, Romania, and U.S. foreign policy. The divide is made from recycled hoses, cable sheathings, and other materials. The manufacturer offers several sizes and shapes, for example, in the form of a decorative planter. What kind of roads would we use if we switched to electric cars from cars with internal combustion engines? Probably plastic roads. This is a real project. The basic idea is to make modules out of recycled plastic and put them together to make parking lots, walkways, playgrounds, and other parts of infrastructure as needed. The latest generation of sustainable infrastructure, which the producers are confident is already being utilized at the main Dutch airport, can resist temperatures from 176 to minus 40 degrees Fahrenheit, is considerably faster to install, and allows area for pipes, wires, and other things. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more juicy tech. There are a lot of electric vehicles on the planet as well. By the year 2021, experts predicted that there would be about 16 million e-cars worldwide. Several nations are making their own advancements in this field, and Sweden is already testing roads that will allow for on-the-go charging of EVs. This is the project we want to show you today. The first 1.2-mile stretch opened in 2018 between Stockholm and Orlando International Airport. The lane was segmented into 164-foot portions with inlaid contact rails. Through a current collector in the vehicle's undercarriage, power is automatically supplied and payment is also made on its own. The technology works for both vehicles and trucks. It measures the amount of power the vehicle receives and deducts the money from the owner's account. These initiatives are part of the Swedish government's strategy to decrease the number of vehicles powered by internal combustion engines. Nowadays, it's normal to see people walking on autopilot while looking down at their phones. But at intersections, drivers might not have enough time to respond to a smartphone zombie. These beacons allow pedestrians to cross the street safely by warning them when they are nearby on their phone screens. People will lift their heads and cross the street safely instead of playing games, checking social media, or doing other things. A German police official thinks it's a good idea. How do you feel? Next, we have a device that resembles fishing nets, but it's used to catch stolen and evading cars instead of fish. It's also a good product for railway crossings, drawbridges, and other similar locations. The net has a width that varies from 15 to 100 feet and can stop vehicles weighing up to 90,000 pounds. This stopping technique lowers the risk of fatalities and can be installed on concrete roads. It also permits the use of ground-level trees as anchor points if necessary. The system is simple to maintain after use and to remove when necessary. Of course, it is also appropriate for intersections, including T-junctions. An advancement for huge industrial enterprises is next. Conventional metal barriers are not very practical because of the sometimes heavy traffic and expensive machinery, because they not only distort themselves in an accident, but also harm the machinery and the floor. A British company has been pushing this alternative since 1984. The elastic design withstands the impact of a 5-ton machine moving at a speed of 6.4 miles per hour. The flexible structure prevents floor damage and the plastic barriers are much easier to maintain and replace than their metal counterparts. The company currently supplies barriers to 60 countries around the world and giants like Heineken and IKEA. This is a substance for use in road marking. It's a unique thermoplastic with a thickness ranging from 0.04 to 0.1 inch, 
that is perfect for upgrading crosswalks, parking lots, and other public spaces. For instance, the video shows a crosswalk and a location close to a school. One benefit is the material's long service life, which lowers the cost for the city since it only has two components. It is good at adhesion and is eco-friendly. How can speed bumps be improved? Instead of just making a smarter version, the project's founders completely altered the idea. The active bump system uses radars to gauge the speed of incoming vehicles. If you are driving under the speed limit, the speed bump won't react. If you are speeding, however, the system sinks by around 2.4 inches into the road, which is very uncomfortable for the suspension. If you drive safely, you won't need to brake or accelerate quickly, which means you'll save gasoline. During tests on a road in Sweden, the percentage of speeding vehicles dropped by 95%. Active Bump is also good for the environment. We've shown you a variety of solar panels in many of our videos, but this project from Hungary will surprise you because it allows you to install solar panels not only on the roof of a house or a car, but also directly on the ground. The manufacturers describe this as an innovative and environmentally friendly material made of recycled plastic and the process is already underway. The installation is not significantly different from that of traditional paver slabs, and the service life is longer than that of concrete, which is good. This tire killer is an alternative that keeps traffic moving in the right direction and keeps the area free of trespassers. Its simple design means that cars moving in the right direction are unaffected by the two-inch high spikes. But if a driver chooses to drive against the flow of traffic and go the wrong way, the result will be flat tires and a call to a tow truck service. The typical version of this system is 4 feet wide and contains 10 spikes. Two varieties are available, one that resembles a speed bump and another for deeper installation in the ground. It is also possible to request a customized version. How safe do you think crosswalks are now? For example, 40% of pedestrian accidents in Russia in 2020 happened at crosswalks, which is a scary number. Engineers are still working to improve safety and they occasionally use odd but effective solutions. This crosswalk can be found in the Canadian city of Quebec, where we are. According to the designers, one of the safety issues at crossings is that automobiles sometimes fail to yield to pedestrians and that pedestrians don't always check that it's safe to cross. The solution, rather than a real one, is a crosswalk with markings that transforms into a fence. It serves as a PR initiative and a warning to respect one another. Here is another initiative to enhance crosswalks. It is a smart zebra crossing, and its basic working principle is as follows. During the day when a pedestrian enters the crosswalk, a flashing yellow backlight activates. At night, a second level of this backlight turns on, allowing drivers to see pedestrians clearly even in the dark. The system is simple to install because it doesn't even require a power source because everything runs on solar energy. A special monitoring system enables experts to control the smart zebra crossing. Watch the next video for more amazing tech.